ladies and gentlemen, the unusual artistry of Sid Croft. Well, hello everybody. Oh, I'm just looking at myself right now. Kelly, oh. I'm so pulled together. All these <laughs> colors matching. I thought you were going to tell me how something was screwed up. <laughs> no, and, you know, and, and you all must know how much I love my hat. <laughs> Hello, you know, I did create Lidsville. It's one of my favorite shows. And in case you don't know anything about it, it's a, a show all about hats. And um, I got to tell you something. This is my favorite hat. I just got it yesterday. And it's all embroidered. Look at it. With the mushroom. And do you know what it says? I will take you on a trip. <laughs> so I wore it this morning when I went to Farmer's Market and it was so jam-packed today. I've never seen anything like it. And I got to tell you, I try to go through as quickly as possible because I got to come home and think about my show. I spent an extra half hour there because I was stopped by everybody. Where'd you get the hat? Where, oh my God, where did you get the hat? Where did you get? And then this guy came up to me and he said, uh, Sir, oh, you know, we're really polite here in Los Angeles. He said, <laughs> Sir, uh, can I buy that hat? And I said, Well, I just got it. It's my favorite hat. I said, uh, You know what? He said, Where can I get one? And I said, Well, uh, did you ever hear of Sid and Marty Croft? He said, of course, I grew up with all of those shows. I said, well, you know, Sid Croft goes live every Sunday. Does he? At, yeah, <laughs> at, I am live, yeah. Um, you are? 93-year-old live, <laughs> alive and kicking. What's the date? And so then? I said, okay. Um, and so I said to him, you know, he goes live, you should watch his show. He said, oh, I didn't even know that he was on Instagram. And so, and I said, uh, I know he's going to be wearing that hat today, so watch it. So, I know, you're out there, it was me, it was me, how about that, that told you about that. And, but thank you for liking my hat. But, okay, um, let me tell you something. Oh, my hat's all embroidered, isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Um, I re really, really enjoyed last week's show. And, you know, we had the star of Mayans, uh, Frankie Loyal. And it, the show was so much fun last week. And, uh, and if you missed it, we post uh, the live shows. And if you missed it, you got to watch it. It was... We had our biggest audience live in two years. Yeah, because all the uh, the bikers <laughs> were watching, you know. And um, and now I have my. What did you tell me this hat is? It's a it's a it's a trucker hat. Trucker hat, a trucker hat. It's my first trucker hat, my, and my favorite. Okay, so anyway. Um, tune in and watch it because uh, I loved it. Okay, and because of my career and my background uh, in show business, of course, has been, uh, you know, I've, I've done, I feel like I've done every avenue in show business. You know, television, movies, live shows, and it just goes on and on. And we did a park and, and so on. But I've been approached by many other companies uh, to consult and, uh, you know, and if, and create stuff for their company. And uh, wow, I'm, I'm just so honored that I was asked that. And of course, uh, uh, I love creating, and so I would always say yes. 
And uh, I got to tell you something. I'm also asked many, many times to join in a charrette. You know what a charrette is? It's a bunch of creative people that get hired um, to work on a huge, huge project, maybe a new amusement park or new rides or oh, so many, many uh, different things. And I love doing charrettes. You know why? Because you get paid. <laughs> and, but it's so much fun to just sit there all day with all these creative people from Universal and Disney and, and uh, it's amazing. And uh, I hope I get to uh, give them a good idea and, uh, and, and then whatever my pay is, it was worth it for them. Okay, so anyway, I gotta tell you, um, everybody out there, I just know that everybody has experienced something that's in Vegas. It's the centerpiece of all of Las Vegas. And if you haven't been to Vegas, I know you've seen pictures or you've seen it on television. The most, right in front of the Bellagio Hotel, the most incredible, incredible, mind-blowing fountains where the water just shoots up, oh God, hundreds of feet. And, uh, and it's free, it's in front of the hotel. So every, I think it might be every 45 minutes or every hour, uh, there's a show with the water and there's thousands of people standing in the street watching it. And so, um, well, there's a company. They're right behind the Burbank Airport. And, uh, you know, I've been to Silicon Valley. I've been to all the great, great companies uh, out there and, and amazing operations. But I got to tell you something. Wet. That's the company that, and they're on at least three city blocks on both sides of the street. And when you get to go on a tour there, it's better than Disneyland, it's better than Universal. It's just the most incredible. And the tour of, of going through this an unbelievable operation, you know, is about an hour, an hour and a half. And guess what? Those, those are the people that do the most incredible fountains all over the world. And I got to tell you something. Going back to me telling you about even going there, being lucky enough where uh, they take you on a tour, and it's the uh, the creator, the CEO, he's the president, and the scientist that actually takes you on this unbelievable tour. And guess what? Today, he's here to join us, and he's my friend. We've been friends for many, many years. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't wait for Mark Fuller to and tell us this about this incredible play. Mark, there you are. Hi, Sid here. How are you? I'm great. Hey, thank you, Mark. Wow, you oh, got a lot of pleasure. books behind you. <laughs> are you are you settled yet? Oh yeah. yeah. That's well, perfect. I've never settled, Sid. I mean, that, settle is not is not an, a positive objective in my life. <laughs> really? Okay, Mark. Mark, my favorite person. You are. I mean, we've known each other when you you were at Disney, and that's uh, oh, I don't know how many years ago was that? I'd say we knew each other on the womb, but that would start a whole yeah. conversation. Oh, oh. That's a whole other hour. You're right. And 
uh, you know, when, when you go to Disneyland and all those magical fountains, uh, that was wet. But, but the fountain at the Bellagio, and if you've been to Dubai or, or Macau or all those, every country has a wet fountain and they keep topping. You guys just keep topping yourselves. And, and we'll talk about, you know, I, I consulted for your company a couple of times and we'll, we'll get into that. But the first thing that I wanna uh, talk about, Mark, is my audience, when they knew you were coming on, they, they're really curious. Of course, they know the wet company and, uh, and they're really curious in knowing how you started or, you know, how did this, why water? What, what was the fantasy about all of that? Well, so when you invited them, I hope you gave them the assignment of going out and buying a whole bunch of squirt guns. Because remember, we're supposed <laughs> to have a virtual squirt gun fight today. You know who used to do that? What? Michael Jackson. Every uh, time he came to my house, he would he'd have a squirt gun. And he was 40 years old. So, you know, you're never too old to have a squirt gun. Okay. The one thing you forgot to tell everybody about our great place here, and it is, it is fun, but they'll never come to a place that has more restrooms per square foot. Because when your whole day is playing, what <laughs> you about every five minutes? <laughs> no, you know, w when you walk through, I mean, we were going to go live and do a walkthrough for that's the audience, a, and we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that you know, down the line here in a, in a month or whatever, because it's just going to blow everybody's mind. Because, that, well, Mark, I want you to tell us, not only about that, but you haven't told us how you got into being so brilliant with water. Well, let, let me start with the, with the punchline, at least for me about this place, uh, you know, when I was at uh, working for Walt Disney Imagineering, which in the day was still called WED, because it was, I was there, not while Walt was still alive, but a after that, but a lot of the great, great animators and Imagineers and everything worked side by side with Walt were still there. And so it was the most fabulous, you know, sort of postgraduate experience anyone could have. But um, after, after a good number of years there, and we did, uh, under my leadership, the, the leapfrog fountain, it's called the one where the clear streams of water at Epcot behind the Kodak Imagination Pavilion, where they jump through the air and like water creatures. We just got a whole bunch of calls to Disney, you know, from people that wanted a fountain like that, developers and people building, uh, the, you know, uh, mixed-use uh, shopping centers and so forth. And, of course, Disney didn't, didn't, uh, do anything except for themselves, but we got so many calls. One day I asked my boss, I said, would it be okay with the Disney rules if myself and a couple of friends moonlighted on the weekend? Because Epcot was over and it was kind of a little bit of a slow time there. And I said, we won't copy anything from Disney, but just to go out and invent fountains. And that's how the company began. Myself wow. and Alan Robinson and Melanie, we formed, we formed WET. Three of us in uh, our R&D center was, was my bathtub, and that's, uh, that's how we began it. And of course, that was Jim Doyle, right? They Jim Doyle who you. joined us shortly after. He wasn't one of the original three, but he's, he's certainly one of the all-time greats because he was part of my special effects team. Uh, when I left Imagineering, I was head, head of the special effects department there. Oh, the part I was going to say, though, he, some number of years later, Marty Sklar, who ran Walt Disney Imagineering for, uh, during Epcot and after, when he retired, he came over to, to wet here, and he walked through and he said, Mark, this is what Imagineering was like when Walt was alive and we were smaller and started it. And I said, Marty, that is the finest compliment anyone can pay me my whole life. And I've, I've never forgotten that. And that was when you were at Universal, right? Or, or even before. Well, no, before that. See, right. We had uh, we had just left. We had a, our design uh, team was at Universal. And then we had a sort of our equivalent of Maple, if, if those of your audience or Disney fans know that's where Walt, you know, in the old days, Walt would build everything. I mean, the monorails, the pirates, 
everything was built in house. You didn't outsource it to you know to some other robotics company or whatever. And we we kept that tradition alive here. So as you alluded to, we have some fantastic shops, model shops, machine shops, like a back lot, like a movie lot, chemistry labs, optics labs, all sorts of fun places here. And we just we do it all here. And and Mark, you have a full gym. I and your dining room with a, a concert. There's a grand piano there, and you can you, you can imagine and and create all over the walls and and the tables and oh my, it's amazing. It's just amazing to to just be honored to go there. Everybody that I have brought there, you've blown their minds, you know, and uh, I can't wait to bring uh, David Copperfield. I keep telling him about it. And you know, the science, tell us about the science room that you built. Well, each, each, each little thing that you mentioned, like the piano has, has a story behind it. We had, a, we had an old uh, rental piano here for years and years. And then for a project that we finished recently, the, for the Expo, uh, the International Exposition in Dubai, which is the biggest, effectively the biggest World's Fair ex Expo uh, in the history of the world. Wonderful. And we did a, a major piece there, which is way more than a fountain. It's, it's, it's like a water pavilion. And they, they tell me that it's the most popular thing in the entire exposition. But anyway, to do that, I thought, uh, well, we can't rely on music, existing music, like we do Bellagio, and some of the great music of the world, of course. We need an original score. So I was fortunate enough to be able to engage Ramin Javadi. All of you who are Game of Thrones fans probably know Ramin. He wrote the entire music for all of Game of Thrones. Don't anybody forget to turn into HBO tonight, House of Dragons prequel, and Ramin did the music for that. And of course he did Westworld and Iron Man and all the rest. But he did an entire original score for our feature in Dubai at the Expo. And I thought, when he was first going to come by, I can't sit him down with his whole beat up piano. So we reached out to um, Steinway and they said, well, every year we build two pianos we call Pops and they're Ferrari red. We only build two a year. And, and we wiggled and wangled and, and we got one of those uh, just a very short time before Ramin showed up and was able to sit down and play it for us. Wow. And, oh, I, 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 there's so mu much to see at WET, uh, the, the miniature room and the, uh, uh, the screening room and the theater. There's a theater where they had do lectures and the, it's, it's insane. And, and I love when we go uh, over to the, in the garden, the center of WET, oh. and, and that's where all the experimental I don't know what you would call it. Yeah, uh, everything that you're working on. You know, I was there when you had the jet for the Bellagio. Oh, yeah. You had a party just to come and see the water shoot up. How many feet? Oh, we go well at the Bellagio. We go about thirty-five stories now with that mate with the group of jets in the middle. That really punctuated. Wow, it's like a cannon going off. As a matter of fact, you once told me, because you're behind the Burbank airport, when you shoot them off, you have to let them know. And well, see, see, those jets will actually go 50 feet high, but that puts them into the, air, into the path of airplanes, so that's when we got a bit of a scolding, and now, now we limit ourselves to 35 stories. <laughs> oh, wow, it's just amazing. I always love going to visit you because what a treat that is, you know. Well, it's, and, it's a fun place, Sid, and, and of course, I mean, you're, you're, even your very home is, is an equal treat to walk through. And I thank you for the several times you've had me over. It's just so much fun. But I think for both of us, don't you think it expresses the fact that neither of us are singular people? Like, we just didn't study business or physics. Nothing wrong no. with that. But... I always tell when, when young people ask me, well, what should I study in college? I say, you know, whatever you learn, someplace in your life, you'll apply it. Uh, so I took, you know, to get an engineering degree takes typically four years. I took five and a half. And that's not because I'm really stupid, I don't think. But it's because 
I t you have to take three quarters of physics to be a civil engineer. I took 12, uh, and I studied uh, basic design in the School of Architecture. I studied theatrical lighting, theatrical makeup, uh, just a, a lot of uh, different classes. They're just interesting, and that's kind of how it all weaves together. You know, Steve Jobs talks about connecting the dots in life, you know, and he, he stuck his head into a, what was it, a calligraphy class, right, with pen and ink, and that's what that's how the, the Macintosh was born with its very font. So and Mark, you, let me add something. You know, I can relate to what you're saying because there's times in our life, and everybody should listen to this, where we go, why am I doing this? You know, when I travel with the circus, it was so frightening for a young kid. And I cried. I wanted to come home every day, you know, but I was making 50 bucks a week. And, and my family became millionaires from yeah. that. You know, yeah. Yeah. that was a lot of money. And then who would even know that years later we did a movie about it, you know? Yeah. And yeah, the movie of the week for NBC. So there are so many things, you know, when I traveled in burlesque and vaudeville. And I got to tell you something about water, too. In 1939, and I was there, the New York World's Fair, there were three things that just, I, I spent the whole day, even though my, my family wandered around to see the glass buildings and all that stuff, things that we never, you know, imagined. It was the world of tomorrow. And the three things that just, it was insane, was the Aqua Show. It was, the Aqua Show ended up, when we were at the, uh, uh, the New York World's Fair in 1964, it was still across the street from our theater. And Leonidoff and Radio City Music Hall did the 1964 one. But in 1939, Mark, they, I went to it. And it was, I don't know, it was probably 50 cents a ticket, you know, in, in those days. And the whole cast walked in their costumes and their candelabras. I remember they were carrying lit Campbell candelabras and they walked into the water and they disappeared and they came back up of course it was a second group of people with a change of costumes and then years wow. later I was in the Folie Bergère in Paris and they did that in a much smaller scale and you know and water oh my god water you know at the New York World's Fair, I remember you. Uh, there was like a lake, a man-made lake, and you and there was a railing totally around this lake, so thousands of people could look down into the water. And in every half hour, there was a full symphony orchestra playing under the water. Wow! You know, and they of course they were in a in a glass whatever you know but wow and that just blew me away the third thing which had nothing to do with water was i saw the first robot at the wrigley building and it was just the most amazing you know i mean for a little kid i'm nine years old no 1939 i was 10 years old to see a robot and then, okay, we're talking about just me looking at that robot when I was 10. Then when I did my act, I had to come up with a, an idea to blow the audience away to do an encore, you know, because puppet acts always stop the show, kids and dogs, you know. And so I didn't have an encore. So I found this Japanese man in New York and he built a robot puppet of me you know wow. that looked just like me and that robot worked a little juggler puppet and and it was dressed the puppet of me was dressed and looked just like me 
and the lip and the orchestra started up. I had original music. My music was a killer. And the music started up and the little the puppet working the little puppet. He kept dropping the balls. You know, and the orchestra would stop. The old vaudeville trick. It's like the aerialist missing the trick. Yeah. That's all that's part of the act. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, and then I would reload and start the orchestra up again and it didn't work again. So the puppet of me threw the control of the little puppet down. What happened? It collapsed. And so I threw the control of the puppet of me down and the puppet of me picked up the little puppet and walked off stage. And I never came back for another bow in the audience. Of course, the damn thing never wor really worked properly. But, but see, what that tells everybody, and I hope everybody's listening gets this, Sid understands story. The story behind that is what frankly brings te tears to my eyes. It, I, I mean, taking and playing on the audience and playing with the audience and, and touching people's emotions in an endearing way and getting the audience to feel like, oh my gosh, what, what's going to happen? The thing isn't working right. And we've all been in situations like that, right? So you're pulling them in. You, you, are, you are a gift to the world in storytelling. But you know what, Mark? You do the same thing with water. I bet we you really do. do. I mean, exactly. uh, come on. I mean, to see a fountain, okay, okay, so it goes higher, big deal, you know, but there's something emotional about the way you program it, the way you approach it. Everything's been done. Yeah, you, you went higher and higher and higher. Of course, people have never seen anything like that, but... You know, when you you came to me the first time, you know, you came to me at, with Jim Doyle. I love Jim. Jim, I hope you're watching. We love you so much. And you're the most talented man on the planet. He does the most incredible special effects. You know, the sinking of the ships in Vegas and, you know, and, and they... Uh, also, Wet did the uh, the volcano in front of the, you know, oh my God, all these unbelievable things that, that you guys have done, you know. And so, uh, where was I going? You brought right? Jim Doyle over. Oh, yeah. Well, Jim, Jim, we, I, I miss you. You got to come and visit me, Jim. Uh, okay. So, anyway, uh, Oh, you, you, both of you called me one day. We knew each other. And you said, I was just offered, uh, and there were 18 contenders out there. Zeffirelli was one of them. And, and Michael Curry, to this day, says to me, oh, my God, you guys got it. I wanted that job. <laughs> and, and what happened? Uh, a South Korean company, a huge company, bought the land across the street from Disneyland in Tokyo, and they wanted to do an indoor in three, as big as three football fields, a dome building, and they wanted to do an amusement park, you know, in competition with Disneyland, but it would run all year long because, you know, it could beat the weather. And you called me. I mean, wow. What an honor that was. And, and I came on board and we worked on this project. And guess what, everybody out there? We got it. Out of the 18 contenders, we got the job. And it didn't happen because there we go again. The economy went down the toilet. You know, who, the, who knows what you know, financially happened and they just couldn't make that kind of a an investment. That was a bad time. It was bad timing. But, oh, I got to tell you, it was the most fun I've ever had in my life because uh, I was telling you the other day and I don't, I, I, you, you said you didn't remember that because it's about, what, about 15 years ago, right? I think it was more than that. I I'm thinking that was when the first Gulf War broke out and then the gas prices went crazy and all yeah. that. I, I think that's what event was that triggered the, 
And you guys were at Universal in the Black Building. Yes, we were. Right. Yeah, yeah, at that time. Because that's where we worked on this. And I had, I had one artist and worked with many of your artists. But we went, this was insane. We went to Kodak. And they worked out a deal that when you bought a ticket, your picture was taken and you didn't even know it. And when you went through the turnstile, they handed you a passport with your picture in it. You know, everybody had a passport because there were four lands, you know. There was a lake and a snow mountain and a jungle and a desert and the parades and the, the whole cast. We called it a cast like Disney calls all their employees a cast. You know, the whole cast were performers. Well, and this is, so, it, remind everybody, this is, this is pre, way pre-iPhone. This is when, when you say a picture, this is when, like, Polaroid film, if you wanted an instant picture, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, parts, no, so way picture. before. They, all. They a picture, what's the big deal? It was a real big deal. The whole project. Yeah. You know, when I look at it, and we started taking some pictures, but no, when I come to see you, I'm going to bring all the books over so you can oh, copy yeah. them i'll yeah, copy them well, but oh it was and it had a sky and it rained there was a storm in there at one point yeah. it rained you know and it snowed in the snow mountain you know and it was real snow and oh my god it was it was so much fun it was the highlight of my life yeah. you know working on on that wow. and i loved when we went to present it in Japan, oh, oh my God, I got to tell you a story about that. You don't know this. I could have still been in jail. When we, when we got to Japan, the airport's like a solid hour away from Tokyo, right? Yeah. I mean, you, it's a beautiful ride in that bus. And then we were going to have a meeting, so I changed my clothes, you know, and I put my hand in my pocket, my pants, I changed my pants, and there was a little baggie of pot in there. Oh. And they had dogs at the airport, yeah. And I immediately threw it in the toilet, <laughs> no, no, emptied it, and oh my God, my heart stopped. And I don't know how it got there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but I mean... Sorry, just kidding. <laughs> sure you did it. <laughs> Kelly, you're going to get a pink slip. Can they still put me in jail after oh, all these years? From what I hear, they let you up. I hear that toilet is still serving time. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet. Oh, I love the hotel we were staying in. The Hilton. I think it was the Hilton. I remember. They, the hotel, they, yeah. Oh, the most beautiful people on the planet. I mean... You know, you can drop your wallet in the street and three hours later, it'll still be there. Nobody touches. And they're so polite. And they're, oh, I love going there. And I love, you know, your your luggage goes upstairs and they even hang it and all that stuff. And I got on the elevator and I pushed eighth floor and the doors closed and they opened immediately. And I thought, the elevator is broken, so I went and to the next elevator. I pushed the eighth floor. The doors open, and the I was on the eighth floor in a fraction of a second. <laughs> and the toilets did magic things too, didn't they? <laughs> so uh, tell us, tell us, tell us, uh, Mark, what's happening? What 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 is the company working on? Well, Always. Yeah something i would love to be involved in we're working on a lot of uh, a lot of fun stuff but that expo which i spoke uh they're reopening it this october it's it, it's such a fantastic site you know and it happened in the middle of COVID, and they still hit their mark of like 25 million visitors and if you folks all go on to youtube and, and search it you'll see some wonderful footage and our feature's name is surreal s-u-r-r-e-a-l and there's some great videos on youtube on that but the way that came about is um, His Highness, the ruler of, of Dubai, years ago when he was, was a bit younger, he loved archaeology. He was out in the desert, and they found 
a site of, I don't know, a thousand years ago or more, maybe uh, folks living in there, and they found amongst the ruins a little very ornate gold ring like this with a lot of little beads on it, and that was saved. It's in the museum now. But that became the emblem for this expo, and you'll see it on all the logos. And we were contacted um, by the one of the leaders in the government there, a, a wonderful woman, uh, Reem Bint Ibrahim Al Hashmi. She's, uh, they say, she's the most powerful woman in the Middle East. And they, I don't, I assume that's true. I know she's she's one of the smartest, most wonderful government people I've ever worked for. She was head of Expo, and she said, "Mark, we we've got all these science exhibits and things on sustainability and fabulous pavilions, but we want a place that's different and relaxing and natural. What can you come up with with water?" And what we did, and I'm saying this, Sid, because it throws back to what I learned from you about storytelling. We said, yeah. well, maybe a thousand years ago, there really was magic on this planet. And maybe, because we don't know, a thousand years ago, people didn't fight in war like they do today. In fact, maybe a thousand years ago, fire and water got along and played with each other. I mean, today, there are mortal enemies. Fire boils water away, and water quenches the life out of fire. How could we find out if it was magic? Well, suppose we took this little ring, and we made it as big as a football stadium, and we allow people to come down inside of it. Maybe they will feel that magic, and it will transform people into a better world. And so we built a, a model of that ring. You know, it's, it's a, a eight-story tall, I think it is, and, and hugely around. It's like an arena. Wow. What we did is to show people that the magic came back. We put around the top of, of this circular stadium 150 meter wide waves, so the waves would come over. Imagine a, a circular piano, and every time you hit a key, a big old wave would jump out and come crashing down that eight story wall. And then imagine we hired or engaged Ramin and Javadi to create the most wonderful music which, and the water works and the waves work to that. And that's what we did. That's pretty interesting, but where's the magic? Well, all of a sudden those waves will come down and they will freeze halfway. This is real water, as close as, as you, you are to those flowers on you. The waves freeze in midair and they go up and they defy gravity and they go back up the wall. And you can stand right there and feel the mist and you think this is magic. Wow. So it's pretty great. They've saved it, of course. They're bringing the, the, the most popular of all the pavilions back forever uh, in Dubai. So any of your folks are going there, it's a must see. But that's, that's what we did there. And we're creating new shows for them now, which is equally exciting. And Mark, uh, I know that you also combine fire with water. Yeah, no yeah. one's ever done that. But, but you know, the, the, the one of the themes uh, uh, um, under excellency for this, for this expo is, of course, sustainability. Well, how do we do wonderful things with fire without adding more, you know, carbon to the atmosphere? Well, we burn hydrogen, pure hydrogen. Now, here's wow. something interesting. Those, if you've ever tried to make colored fire in your fireplace, any of you guess you throw some chemicals on it. it but the carbon, when it burns, is so bright yellow, those little glowing carbon particles. It's hard to, it's hard to color that. Hydrogen burns with a clear flame. It's not, you can't even see it. So it's hotter than blazes, but it's clear. And so just a tiny bit of these wonderful little chemical salts that we totally safe we put in there, and we get brilliant glass of green and blue and red. So we have this, this safe, wonderful fire in the middle and the water on the outside, and we've restored magic to this planet. Wow. I, I just, I can't believe your company, and of course you are, you're the man that made it all happen. And like when I introduced you, not only the CEO, the president, give them every title on the planet. And, and oh, the most beautiful women work there. The most beautiful, all Miss Americas. Doyle and I, you know, we, we were let out. <laughs> Why? Actually, you said you don't talk about the guys. That would be Jim and me. I, the guys here aren't much to look at. You always talk about the women for heaven's sakes. <laughs> But the women, the women that work there, and and everybody is so beautifully trained. Not even you don't have to train someone when they're in, uh, you know, a, an environment like that because then they become, you know, 
on their own, they become magical. It's, it's, it's so exciting. And, and I, God, I thank you so much, you know, for coming on. I've been wanting to have you on and you were, you're always out of town. It's my, my pleasure. It's, it's always a treat to talk to you and to, and to have a conversation with some other folks too. That's you know, something that I always wanted to do with wet, because we were we built a little piece of the electric parade, the original one at Disneyland. And then we built the entire parade for Disney on Parade, which was a big touring show. We built that whole show, you know, and for the first and second year they had a second edition. And Roy Disney, that was his show. And so I always, always wanted to do an electric parade in water. Yeah. And we talked about it, you know, and you even brought me in that, that new hotel. It was new then. And that big driveway going up to it, it wasn't wide enough or it was. And we talked about maybe doing an electric parade Oh, the someday, whole someday in the right place to come, we'll have to do that for sure. But that's the next thing, Mark. We got to do an electric parade oh, in water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it, it it's so exciting to go to Disneyland and, and see the electric. Down there just a few weeks ago, and still people line up. I don't know how many hours in advance because it's it's just a wonderful experience. It really, it really is. It's and and they brought back the old one because yeah. they. You know, they did it, uh, people almost, they didn't reject the new one, but they just wanted the old one because yeah. it's its much warmer, you know, w without all that magical technology, which they use in other ways in, uh, you know, in the park. Yeah. I've heard, of, I've heard there's a bunch of people trying to get rid of the Eiffel Tower and then they had to bring back the old one. <laughs> Somebody tried to get rid of Statue of Liberty, but they had to bring back the old one. Yeah, the good the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> David did make it disappear. Somebody tried to get rid of uh, Sid Croft. But I they know. Had to bring back the old one. That was <laughs> that was David Copperfield. Hey, what else? Are we, we, I, I, uh, I think we covered uh, an awful lot of ground here, and I think what really would be exciting is for us to come back and go on the tour. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't know, you know, it's so spectacular and just to see it on, on a phone is that, yeah, because, you know, I, I've had uh, people walk through their homes and, and, and whatever, you know, and it is intimate. I see your library behind you with all oh, those. Yeah. This is a all those X-rated books. Seven thousand books. I think this yeah. is book here. <laughs> hey, I, I tell you, I tell you a quick phrase on libraries. I, I, a fellow that I admire said once, he says, "You know, I, I don't judge a man or a woman by the books in their library they've read. I judge them by the books in their library they aspire to someday read." So that explains my library here. Is there? Do you have time for one quick water? Well, of course, of course we do. Yeah. Fired no, that's what, yeah. <laughs> Come on. When I was at Disney, one of my first jobs was finishing the, the, the special effects for Big Thunder Mountain, those of you who've been to California. When you first go in there, you know, it's a roller coaster, and you get in, and you go up this track, and there's these things that keep the cars from sliding back. They're really allowed to clickety, clickety, click, 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 you go up the top. Yeah. And on the first one, when you go up, what we had was this waterfall, and the water comes down and then it hits this stalagmite and it parts into two little waterfalls, and the train goes between them. And you have to have the water adjusted just right because if it's too much water, it would stiff, jump over that and come down on the track. And it was 700 gallons per minute of water pouring down. But I went in there one day, it just hired on a year or so ago, and somebody had turned the waterfall way down, and I thought, Doggone it, that's one of the big thrills. I'm going to climb down this ladder, and I know where that big old valve is, and I'll turn that water up. And my friend was there. I said, I'm going to keep turning it up, and you tell me when it's just right, because if you turn it up too much, it'll be bad. So I was turning <laughs> it up, and all of a sudden, the train with loaded full of people comes, comes in there, 
And that noise, <laughs> clicking, 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 clicking. And my Ira, is it up enough yet? And I couldn't hear what he said, but I figured it wasn't turned up. So I turned it out, open more. Ira, is it open enough? <laughs> and I couldn't hear him. So, so I climbed the ladder and I looked. Here's this train of people coming towards up this hill. And, and you've got that lap bar across your waist so you can't get out of the train. And they're all trying to get out of the lap bar. <laughs> and and, and, and their, their eyes are like bigger than you can believe. And I looked at the waterfall and it was turned up full blast. This massive water, they were going to go right through the middle. The whole train of people went right through the middle of that water. Soaking wet. Oh, my gosh. And the, the bottom of the train holds about <laughs> almost a foot of water. So they were all trying to get their feet out. And they went, I thought, I'm so fired. I've only been here a year with my life stream to work for Disney. I am so tired. <laughs> and I ran out to the station. I got the, the supervisor. And fortunately, it was a warm summer day. And the, there were no uh, uh, people wearing mink stoles or having their Nikon cameras that got in the room. Everybody had a good laugh. But I thought, I did it this time. <laughs> well, D Disney has money. If that could have been how many people on the train? Let's say 40 or something, I guess. Yeah. That's 40 lawsuits <laughs> yeah. getting soaking wet. Yeah. So, so uh, I've survived it. Hey, Mark, thank you so, so much hey, for coming on. And uh, absolutely, you. you know. And your, your, your comrade Kelly there is absolutely. Isn't she a trip? I always say everybody should have a Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I know she was working with you because you've never done this before, right? That's true. Coming on live. Never and, done this. and now you're going to do it all the time. And guess what? A couple of weeks ago, we had Pat Boone. Oh. And he kept saying, don't worry. I got it. I got it. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. Kelly worked with him. He never came on in the whole hour. So finally, <laughs> Kelly who's absolutely brilliant, uh, had him on the phone. So we only heard his voice. But, you know, I worked with him. And, oh, it was so much fun to have him on. And we laughed about a lot of things because we had a lot of crazy stories. I almost, uh, well, it's a whole other story. Let him work with the voice. Pat Boone is a great one to have. And he's still with us, and boy, he would—he told us some great, great stories. Because oh, I, I took I him. See that one? I'll, I'll go back and, and watch it. Oh no, they're, they're all posted. Yeah, yeah I will. I will. I'm miss that. One. You know, I had—we lost two, and we don't know why. We can't figure it out. We lost Charo, and we lost uh, uh, Weird Al. Trump. Weird Al. You did with Donald Trump. I I heard you yeah, we that. lost that one too. Yeah, and the Donald Trump one. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I love I Donald Trump. Don't that one. I think the other side pulled it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark. I remember what they did with it. Yeah, that's. that's <laughs> Mark, when you find out what happened to Charo and uh, and Weird Al, would you please call me, okay? I will. And listen, if a lady answers, hang up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so, so thank much, you. everybody. You, your fans are wonderful because they've got the, the intelligence to watch you. You're no, they, I, oh my God, they're from all over the world, they're watching us. That's so, true. everybody has seen your fountain somewhere, somewhere <laughs> on the planet. Thank you. Well, we've got a few more coming. So, so. Oh, how cool. I'm going to come visit you soon. Two, for sure. For yeah. Sure. Thank you again, Mark. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Uh, everybody. Okay. Um, people are already asking about the hat, weren't they? Yeah. Well. Well, how can they get it at one of these? I'm hats? gonna. Po I'll post it in the stories. Oh yeah. Right after this. I love this hat. You know what it says? I will take you on a trip. I mean, it's it's made to order. For me okay <laughs> i love taking you all on a trip and i hope i did with mark fuller thank you so much mark that was cool and i got my trucker hat they fit differently yes they do yeah. and um and next week we're going to have selena luna right yes and uh wow 
Uh, so you better tune in. We have the most interesting people. And soon we're going to have, uh, we're trying to, uh, people reach out to us. I'm so blown away from that. And a couple of huge, huge stars, you know, but we're just trying to find a date for them. People are busy and they are traveling right now. Uh, so thank you so, so much, everybody. I love you. Thank you for tuning in to be continued. I'll see you next week. Have a great Sunday.